Hi everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. In case you are new here, I am a former K-2 teacher who loves sharing tips and tricks and ideas here on YouTube. For a little under two years now, I have been over here at least once a week on my Sunday Spotlight to share a quick tip, trick, or strategy that you can take and use in your classroom right away. If that's something you're interested in, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell. That way you get notified of all my new videos. This week I am back with another card game for the classroom. And in case you don't already know this, I already have a playlist full of dice and card games. I love using card games and dice games in the classroom. They are easy. Dice and cards are relatively cheap. And there's just so many different math skills you can practice with them. So I have a whole playlist. I'll link that up here and down in the description if you want to check those out after this video. Now I wanted to make this card game video because I have been getting many questions about, you know, socially distanced centers and how can I get students to kind of work together, but they also have to maintain, you know, three to six feet. They can't necessarily be sharing the same dice and things like that. So both of these games are great to be played either individually or with a partner and they can totally sit at their own separate seats. They'll have their own cards and I'll explain how to play each one. Let's dive in. The first card game I want to share is called Flip to 50 and just as easy as it sounds all you're going to do is have students split a deck of cards so they will each get their own half of cards and basically they're going to kind of race or flip and see who's the first one to 50. Now to play this game, if you're in the classroom and you probably have already set up individual kind of workstations, so maybe students have their own cubes or they have their own counters or they have their own dice, deck of cards, however it works. But what they can do is sitting across from each other, sitting far away from each other, they will basically take turns flipping a card. So their cards have to be randomly shuffled and in two different piles. And what they're gonna do is player A will go ahead and flip their card, let's see, five, and they will write that down on a piece of paper. So they can just have a scrap, a piece of scrap paper that works best. So they will write down five. Then player B will go and they have to take turns because you can have them race. I don't like to have them just flip, 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 flip and see who gets to 50 first. This way it's a little more cooperative. They have to think about each one a little bit more and it gives students at kind of an equal amount of time to be able to solve their problem as they're adding on instead of just one person who's way better at addition and the other one who might need help and the other one just races them and beats them. So then player B would go nine and they would write that down. Now player A, now they already have five on their paper, then they flip their card nine. And like I said, on their scrap paper, they can draw pictures if they want. So five plus nine equals 14. If they need cubes, they can go ahead and do that. Whatever their process is for solving is totally up to them, but they just keep uh, keeping track of what number they're at. And the first student that makes 50 is the winner. And now with this game, I make all face cards 10, just so you know. So if they happen to flip five, you know, face cards in a row, they'll win right away, shuffle, play again. It is a very simple game, but I like it because every time they play it, every time you shuffle those cards, split them in half and then take turns, they're adding new numbers, right? It's never the same numbers in a row. You can also play this game with roll to 50 in which they do the same exact thing. They just roll a dice. They use their scrap paper or their counters, however they want to add it and keep track to see who gets to 50 first as well. The next card game I want to share with you is bingo. Super easy. Everybody knows how to play bingo, but for this game, you are going to want students to go ahead and each have their own deck of cards. So you can get cards really cheap. I'll go ahead and link some links down on Amazon of, you know, big packs that are like a dollar per deck or $2 per deck. But you can also go to the dollar store. If you happen to live near a casino, uh, go ahead and email them, give them a call. They love to donate old dice and old um, decks of cards that they can't use anymore. They physically can't use them in the casino after they've been used for a certain amount of time. So they love donating them to teachers who can use them. That was something I learned when I taught in Vegas for three years. So get your hands on some cards. And the way this is played is you will actually take out all of the face cards. So students can take out all the face cards and then they will go ahead and randomly make a four by four grid 
on their table or on their desk. Okay, so whoever is playing this game, whether you're doing it whole group or small group, whoever is playing bingo is going to need their own bingo board, which is essentially going to be a four by four grid with all of the face cards taken out of the deck. Now the caller, so whether it's you, the teacher, or like I said, if you're doing this in a small group, you may have it so two students are playing and one person is the caller. And the caller is just going to use another deck of cards with no face cards. To play, the caller will be able to flip over a card. They will say nine. And whoever's playing bingo will just look inside theirs. Any nines that they have, they will turn upside down. Then they go again. Four, no fours, three. Very simple, I don't really need to explain all of it, but they basically keep going until one player gets a bingo, which will either be four in a row this way, four in a row that way, or diagonally. Whoever gets bingo first is the winner. What's great about that game is it can be done whole group if every single one of your students has a deck of cards. You also technically only need a deck of cards per two students for everyone to play because what, there's 52 cards in a deck, take out the face cards, there's 12 of those, 40 cards, split in half. Yeah, you'll have enough for two students to play with one deck of cards. Now, another cool thing that you'll want to do is, or that you can do rather, if you don't wanna play with your entire class at a time, you could also go ahead and put this in a center because students, maybe two or three of them, have their little grid and another student, a third student, can be the caller. So they could practice being the caller where they just randomly flip a card and call it out and students can keep playing until one of the two people with a grid get bingo. So those are just two fun card games that I wanted to share with you and add to my list of card games for the classroom. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel like I said earlier, that way you can keep getting notified of all my new videos. See you next Sunday, bye.